Hey everybody, welcome to Las Vegas Ho. You are now tuned in to the Crazy Sexy Cool Podcast. I am your host, Bethany. I am joined by my co-hosts, my fellow Sagittarians, my friends in real life. We have the beautiful Meek and the beautiful Elizabeth. What's up, y'all? What's, What's up? up? Hey. Good, yeah, ho. Yeah, ho. <laughs> Here at Crazy Sexy Cool, we give our black ass millennial opinions about the crazy, the sexy, and the cool hot topics. But uh, something's a little different today. We're on a new platform. I said we're moving on up. We're falling on up. We ain't going to Meek is lit. I love it. So, welcome. You know, if this is your first time hearing our voices, I'm Bethany. As I stated before, we got Meek Des, who just gave us a beautiful rendition of the Jefferson's theme song. (laughs) And we got Miss Colgate Smile over here, Elizabeth. So, I want to play a quick game, a quick icebreaker game. And this is called This or That, or some people will call this Would You Rather. Okay. So I'm going to start with Elizabeth. See? I always start with you. You always start. You always start. You do. You do. I always start with me. And I don't know what she's about to ask. So I'll be like, (laughs) me first. You guys have no idea. Yeah. Okay. And if you want to answer this to me, cool. But I do have another question for you, okay? So, Elizabeth, would you rather be tased for 15 seconds or bungee jump in the Grand Canyon? Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Look at okay, so the way I'm set up right now, I'm, I can tolerate pain a little bit more. So I might, you might can tase me for like 15 <laughs> minutes. 15 seconds. 15, 15, 15 seconds. 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15 seconds. seconds. And I and I could take it. So, mm-hmm. so I'm, 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 I'm going to go with taste. I'd rather be taste. You know. <laughs> what about I'm, you? I, I'm not jumping off no good. <laughs> oh. What about but you? you know, some, but you know sometimes when you get taste, like, it can make you pee on yourself and shit right. on yourself. Yeah. So hopefully your bladder is empty, dog. Because <laughs> if not, you're going to be shitty lids for the rest of your life. <laughs> See, ain't nobody gonna know that. <laughs> she gonna, <laughs> whoever she gonna be a, that person that tased me. She's gonna be a different kind of busted baby. After and busted baby. Look at that. Hopefully, I'll never have to go there. But you know, you go, you go from busted baby, baby to shitty baby. Ugh. Disgusting. Ew. Oh, me? Ow. <laughs> I'm not doing that. <laughs> so what about you, Meek? Are you oh going to or are you going to bungee jump, bruh? Look, you know what I was making for the it list, but I, I like I like that feeling. Like, I really do. Like, have you been tased like, before, is what you're saying? No, I've never been tased ever in my motherfucking life. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, like, it's something about when something hurts so good. Like, you know, you and I, we go to the gym. So it's like... That pain. It hurts. And it feels it hurts good. So the pain sign. Yes. So good. So good. So oh, my God. Yeah. Okay. I'm so about- I, have a, I have another question. Go ahead. So would you rather... Like, so let's say I present you two, two stones, right? You take one stone, you're 18 again with everything that you know now or you can be your current age with a million dollars <laughs> take me back to 18 dog really hey. take me back really Yo, but look put it this way look i don't understand i don't mind telling my age i am 32 going on 33 if I know what I know now at 18, I'm going to have way more than a million dollars by the time I'm Yes, 32. ma'am. Like, right. like, damn sure. Like, oh, my. 
Uh, you know what's so crazy, B, that you brought that up is because, like, so I'm going back to school, mm-hmm. and I was, like, walking the campus. So this is the same campus I was on back when I was, you know, that age, 18. I was like, fuck, like, if I knew what I know now, like, bitch would be making major motherfucking moves. Like, hell yeah, take me back. Yeah. Take me back. Are you the same, Liz? I mean, I'm still learning, so. But, yeah. (laughs) Yeah? I think I I would, too. Yeah, because, like, I can make a lot of different choices in my life. A lot of good ones, too. Yeah, but at the same time, it's like, well, I guess knowing what we know now, and we take that at 18, we still kind of have those experiences. We don't really, I guess, get to cancel those out. But, yeah, I would definitely do a whole lot of shit different. Yeah. But, you know, especially like knowing what we're like, what we're going through right now, a pandemic and like, you know, you wouldn't be able to tell me back in 2004, 2005, when I was 18, that the nigga with the number one TV show on NBC, The Apprentice, was going to end up being a goddamn president. I'm like, (sighs) you couldn't tell me that four years ago. I mean... (laughs) Fuck AT. <laughs> Let's not play it. Like you couldn't tell me that fucking four years ago, okay? <laughs> but but then but here we are. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, but here we the fuck are. If, if if I look, given with the knowledge I know now, my ass will run for motherfucking president. Okay. Okay. And no, 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 the cheat code. Vote shit. for me. I probably am this- going. You know, for the love of Ray J, you know what I mean? Get a little, you know what? Get a little fame. <laughs> you know what? Get a little fame or whatnot, then go to the apprentice and then become a senator. Bam, president. I'm Boom. sick. <laughs> I'm dead. <laughs> Why not? Uh, so, would you like try to, you know, kind of go into the future or seek out certain celebrities or people like before they became famous? Mm -mm, mm -mm. No. What I would do though is I would find Facebook dudes and That's what I mean. Like they ain't famous. Like they famous but they ain't famous. And also uh, is it uh, Rogan? What's the dude Rogan name? I will also yeah I'll seek his ass out too. Like, I would seek his ass out too because, like, those motherfuckers they making they making certain moves. Also, Fifty Cent ass, like he making certain moves too. So, like, I'll seek all them motherfuckers out. But yeah, like, I'd be on Harvard campus. Like, nah, bro, where Jeff Bezos at? <laughs> that part, that part in his library, looking ass. Okay, look, I need a library card. <laughs> <laughs> where he at? Because. I'm Cause think about it, you know, he got married and his wife, you know, she she hit a lick, bruh. She got she got the billion back and that mean, divorce. Bruh. All I gotta say is those type of men always have Check. a thing for chocolate. So that a chocolate fantasy. <laughs> hey. Yes, honey. Yes, they always got a thing for chocolate. Them, yes, they got some yeah. So I, yeah, we Benzo. What's up? Benzo. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know this now, but I'm letting you know right now. Like, keep going. Whatever you going through, just keep doing it. Push, push harder, mm-hmm. harder. Yeah, that's what he said. Hard. <laughs> that's what she <laughs> said. Look at that. She said. <laughs> <laughs> so speaking, speaking of ex wives getting that bag. You know the big talk of the town, talk of the streets, the internet streets. Um, Dr. Dre's wife, Nicole, is looking for, you know, spousal support. And it totals up to about two million, two million. A, a month. Okay. Two M's. So they uh broke down, I guess, <laughs> what she <laughs> was asking they? for. They well, TMZ broke the story. So you can either you take that with a grain of salt or, you know, it is what it is. So uh, Nicole, she's looking for 1.9 to cover her expenses. And they're saying her laundry and cleaning bill 
is 10k a month. Her clothes are they using time? 100, 135 k. Let, let her finish. Let her. Her education, uh, well, tuition for the kids and living expenses, 60k a month. Entertainment. Hold on, I have to read this again because, like, really, nine hundred thousand a month entertainment period. Charitable contributions, one hundred and twenty-five a month. Mortgage, one hundred k a month. Now this part is what got me, and I was like, I don't, I don't understand. I don't understand. I don't, I don't understand. Um, <laughs> she got sprint. She got sprint. Dog. <laughs> no, bro. What, it oh, said, what this is? Telephone. Telephone. Cell phone, email, email, email nigga, twenty k, twenty k a month. What? What? No, no. But how? How your entertainment? How? How your entertainment costs more than your charitable expenses? <laughs> Fuck, I want to know. Sheesh. <laughs> Look. So, if you're married to someone that's making that kind of bread. You guys get a divorce. Are you looking to like straight up cash out like this? Me, the way she's doing it is a little extreme, like very extreme. But <laughs> um, I feel like when you date somebody in the industry business and um, I guess you, you're married to them, you guys have kids, you guys have been in a relationship for years, you kind of expect those same, you know, the luxury type of lifestyle. You know, you, you expect that. And when you're with that person and they introduce you to that, I mean, it's kind of hard to kind of go back to, cause I don't, I honestly, I don't know what she does on the side as her own businesses or anything, but like, if I'm with somebody in her entertainment business and we're married for years and we have kids, I'm expecting the same kind of lifestyle. I am. Sure. Hers is a little extreme, but I'm definitely expecting the same. Because you, you can't introduce me to this lifestyle and then expect me to go back to normal. Like, like I have, you know. So but. here's my thing. We don't know her. Right, at all. You know what I mean? So we don't know what she has been accustomed to even before marrying this man. That's she could really come from, like, a rich-ass family. And she just, you know, continue to keep that lifestyle by marrying someone like Dr. Dre. Correct. Um so she could be well within her rights to absolutely ask for this. I'm not in the business of counting nobody's pockets. So right. I ain't That's mad hard. at it. I'm not either. Because you know what? We don't really like I said, we don't really know them. And you know, I think about I think back to like when MJ, Michael Jordan, got divorced. Mm -hmm. And like his his Juanita? ex wife Juanita, Juanita? got the <laughs> money. Okay. <laughs> and but you didn't hear anyone saying like uh, MJ doesn't want to pay it. You know what I mean? We don't know. Dr. Dre may be like, that's it? Cool. <laughs> right. Here you go. While everybody else at home is like, what? I would never. I could never. I would, you know, that's too much money. That She's being greedy or a gold digger or whatever. We don't know. That might be less than what he was expecting. Right. I mean, I but go back off of what you say like I do think that a lot of people need to like be cautious of projecting their own financial strain on exactly. someone else's problems yes. so it's like I looked it up they've been married for 24 years you don't know what the fuck she had to deal with for those 24 right. years mm -hmm. so like at the end of the day she's accustomed to a certain lifestyle and also she like she was in a way, a part of what he achieved within that lifestyle. Yep. So to think that she does not deserve a certain portion, like, that says a lot about that person's, you know, right. value within themselves. But I think the thing that people don't realize is that, so um, I, I I had to partake in this when it, when it comes down to court and what, and what my lawyer advised me is that, like, you aim high, so then that way you negotiate, right. and then you're able to meet in a median. So even though this makes headlines and it's like a, it's like a attention grabber of like two mil, blah 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 blah, but like you have to, like, she can't come in like, oh my god, yeah, two thousand a month, it's cool. Like, no, because motherfuckers gonna want to come in and negotiate that two thousand a month. So you have to aim high to be able to negotiate to a point where both parties can agree 
on right. like okay this is cool it's it's best to go over and beyond than to like because then you're going to short yourself exactly but no like a thing that i don't like is that people don't like to count in emotional investment right. and that's <laughs> huge because huge part. Like, for 25 for 24 years to be an emotional investment to someone else's achievement you can in many ways like put yourself to the complete side you know what i'm yeah. saying so it's like 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 you're putting this person over yourself so it's like mm-hmm. i i don't i don't like the fact that people be like well what did she do and did she make the beats and it's like oh, right. you don't know what she did because we had to go through this when um kobe was um, him and Vanessa were going through their divorce, which ended up, you know, they ended up getting back together, of course. By, Remember? By wise man. Keep happy wife, happy life. But, well, remember what Drake said? You wasn't with me shooting in the gym. Where that whole phrase came from. Because that those two were together for a very long time. At that point, I think they were they were married for like 10 years at that point. And people try to make it seem like, well, she doesn't deserve 120 million. Bruh, like this woman was put through a whole lot in right. those 10 years, like a whole rape scandal. And, you know, it was but a lot beyond, that she had to but, go through. But beyond that, because like I don't because I don't want to make it seem like women have to go through hell to deserve what they deserve. But Kobe even stated himself that it was because of Vanessa's understanding as to why he was able to be the better player that he is. It was because she was she was very understanding, like, babe, I'm going into the gym early in the morning to late at night. Like, don't, like that understanding and being able to have his family and have his, his career at the same time and not giving the optimatum. So it's like, it doesn't always have to be a hell of like a woman putting up with like someone cheating on you or scandal or whatever. Like it's also providing peace. It's also mm-hmm. providing a, a state of mind. And at the end of the day, that, 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 um, that's from energy. So let's not say that she's not worthy of what she invested into this man because it's because of her. She's a part of his achievement. And yeah. like I said, I don't know Dre and his estranged wife situation, but 24 years of marriage, you Woo. were married for, to her for 24 years for a reason. So mm-hmm. let's, not, let's not excuse that part. You right. Know? Yeah. 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 So I'm not mad I think run it up. Run that shit up. Run <laughs> yeah, that I ain't mad up. at it. They, they negotiate. Y'all negotiate. It's going to work itself sure. out. Like I said, I, I don't like to count people's pockets. Um, we have another story that's, I guess, similar. Yeah. Where um, Future's baby mama, I, I, she's a mother of one of his children. I'm going I'm to say that. I don't like really saying the whole baby mama thing because we don't know yeah. her. Uh, right. Eliza Rain, um, it's, you know, reports saying that she wants 53000 a month for child support for their uh for their baby. And Summer Walker, the singer, she had, you know, some comments about <laughs> this woman um wanting that. So Summer Walker, she posted on her Instagram story a picture of future and um Eliza saying she wants fifty three thousand a month. Women like this are so disgusting and sad. I feel bad for this man. Do y'all where do y'all even find these type of women? And I'm sorry, the part that made me pause. <laughs> she said, I feel bad for this man. For this man? Bruh, are you, huh? Huh? And I like SZA and her music too. And then not SZA, not SZA, Summer. It's Summer Walker? SZA. Oh, I'm Summer. like, whoa, whoa. Summer. Whoa. Okay. We're not going to involve SZA into this shit. <laughs> See? See, Summer. But I, you even got no kids. How are you gonna speak that on part? It? Say Hello. it. Speak say it louder it. for the niggas in the back. Should you have kids to even speak on this situation? So, it to me, this is very disappointing. Um, why do you feel sorry for this man? I don't know. I have no idea. He's over like, here bro. sticking his everywhere, anyways. No, <laughs> like that he part. has a proven track record of not 
Like every time a woman says that she's pregnant with his baby, he immediately denies it. Requ- denies like it. accountability and, for and, his actions, and then runs away from like DNA tests where it has to be exactly. court ordered. So it's like, bro, how do you feel sorry for this man who has this many children and this many baby mamas, and is like notorious for doing this shit over and, and over, over and, again. and and even did it to a superstar? Like it's not like you know he was going to do this just because, you know, this woman is living, I right. guess she lives in Florida and, you know, we don't know who she is. Right. He's going to do it to anybody, any woman. He's going to do this shit. What's up, yeah. man? <laughs> I, have, I, have to, I have to do this because I have on my AirPods, so I don't want to, like, you know what I'm saying? But you are absolutely right. And it's like, it goes back to what we said in, like, a couple episodes ago where it's like, in this norm of accepting men of of like escaping their duties as a father, like why is this normal and why are we showing empathy, sympathy to these men? Now, once again, once again, when it pertains to court, fifty two thousand. Yeah, that sounds like a big number, but maybe you're broke. Maybe you don't know what right. it actually looks like. You know what I'm saying? Like you can't project your financial distraught onto someone else's issue. Second, when it comes when it pertains to court, you gotta run it up so that way you can negotiate down. So, so for those who don't understand that, like that's so how it goes. Eliza, she posted on her Instagram story just to give some people, a, you know, a little bit it's of clarification. Right. She said, in a child support case, both parents have to submit financial paperwork to determine a fair amount of support. I submitted mine day one, but guess what happens if the other party doesn't? They do a general assumption of income. So there's a site called Forbes where people report their income. The state has guidelines according to what is reported to Forbes. If true, the state of Florida guidelines suggest 53,000 until there the you go. objects there or you have it. financial yes. status. So there you have it. I don't yes. like it when people are loud and wrong and counting other people's pockets and saying, That's you know, hard. and calling her, you know, disgusting. And where did you find these women? What? So Impressed. not only so not only that, people are kind of, you know, calling Summer's bluff because she is in a relationship with London on the track. Who but, has kids. Who has children. Who is currently being sit what he, he he has papers for uh what child yes, support yes. that he's yes, he's running he from as well. So that. she's speaking <laughs> on something that she needs to be handling, something totally different. Mika's right here. What's up? Go ahead, me. Go ahead, me. <laughs> I got to speak on this. <laughs> FYI, I don't like at the end of the day, for you women that do not have kids that are joining yourself with a man who has kids, like, first off, yeah, you, you hear your boo side and blah, 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 blah. But I encourage you to, to get a good, grounded understanding of the situation. <laughs> yes. First off, second, you do not support no man that's not properly supporting their child. At like this all. is this is unacceptable. For all you women that's out here over here calling boo bay and all this type of shit, and this nigga's not properly supporting their child to so the fact that the baby mama gotta go run papers. Like that's bro, that says like, think. it's disgusting <laughs> and it says a lot about you. And if you think that he won't do it to you, sister, you got something, you got you got another thing coming. So Absolutely. and I'm not and I'm not trying to project that onto you and I'm not trying to wish that onto you, but it's just it's it's a pattern. And like and I'm not trying to say London is not doing his due diligence. I don't know what the situation is, but the fact that this shit has to be taken to court shows me that there's not no clear communication between the parties. So if you're bro. not supporting a clear communication between the parties, bruh, like I I don't got nothing the, for you. The easy thing to do is to mind your black ass business, bruh. That part. Period. And you can't be out here speaking and getting on your motherfucking soapbox speaking on other people's child support cases when your man got one pending. Like, and it has nothing thing. to do with I'm about you. to pop a bottle. <laughs> that part. Bel Air. <laughs> yes. I know, I'm serious. because It has nothing to do with you. Like, to me, that is the worst. Like, as for, for the listeners that are new to us, like, all three of us, we are mothers. You know what I'm yes. saying? We are single mothers. And, you know, like, we have a different perspective when it pertains to this. And for those women that do not have children and you're joining yourself with a man who has a child, if you are not 
well, um, how can I say, like, well-rounded within his his child situation with, like, the, 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 the mother of the child and everything, mind your business and stay out of it. Mm-hmm. Like, just Period. completely mind your business and stay out of it, you know? But that's, for you that's to the get best on, thing to do. Yeah, for you to get on a pure pit and talk about where do you find these women? Well, you know what? Let's be honest. Like, I don't, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know Eliza. I don't. I don't. So I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna like, you know, uh, defame her her character because of you know of of the mess that her and Future are going through. You know what I'm saying? But I will say this though. For you to quickly to be able to show empathy or sympathy towards a man that has no fucking care as to where he plant his seed. <laughs> it's not <laughs> a woman. Like the man made his choice once he decided to nut inside of her. It's not even on the woman. So at where did where, where is that accountability? Like where is that accountability? Like and that's what I'm not seeing and that's what makes me disgusted by this whole completely. This whole complete situation. It is. It's really disgusting. Especially like we like you said, we don't know Eliza. We don't know where she come from, you know, like her background, her story, whatever. But what we do know <laughs> is that Future's track record is proven. He is a trash ass dude when it comes to s- domestic situations with children and the mothers of these children. And the way that he spoke about her on social media. You would think, like, nigga, you slept with her. We didn't force this woman into your life. She didn't trap you. This is someone that you, this was consensual. You had sex with this woman. That part. Like, own up to your shit and be like, you know what? Cool. All right. That's my baby. You know, the the blood test proves it's my child. So I'm going to do what I got to do financially. And that's it. Clearly immature. But also... But also, I'm not against men wanting to clarify. Like, when I had my child, right, I'm talking about day two. I was like, swap him, swap him. Let's go ahead and get this shit out the way. You know, it's nothing wrong with men wanting to clarify, like, is that my child? That's nothing, nothing wrong. wrong. That's okay. But but to publicly defame or, you know what I mean, to throw shade on someone who gave birth to your child, like, it, it's a horrible character flaw, like all together. Like, and yeah. to be honest, it's certain shit that shouldn't even be talked about in public. You know what I mean? Like, true. And for you to go around here busting nuts inside of bitches and then want to sit here and be like, it ain't mine. Like, come on, bro. Like, you 30, 36, 38 years old. Grow the fuck up. If Fuckboy Club had a motherfucking president, symbol, it would be fucking, <laughs> it would be fucking future. <laughs> With so fucking Ray Ban doing like like <laughs> real talk like fuck like that that's fuck boy mentality. When the fuck are we gonna grow up and when we're gonna have accountability? If you if you are bold enough to sit up and bust inside of a female, be stand up when you get that that late text that I'm late text. You get what I'm trying to say? Like, right. <laughs> so you know what I it made me think about like dating, you know, and being single. The moment I hear a man who has children oh. speak any ill on their child's mother, this this girl could be batshit crazy. But when you decide that you want to tell me that she's crazy, you can't stand her, or bop, that is the that is such a huge turnoff that I, I probably won't talk to you again. I, I, I I'm the same way. I'm definitely the same way. Anybody who's comfortable enough as a man that has a relationship with their baby mother or don't have a relationship with your baby, if you're comfortable enough to talk to me about your baby mama, I don't want to talk to you because I, th- me personally, I'm not talking to no man about my baby daddy, no matter what our situation is, whether it's good or bad, because like that, that, that shows me your character. Like you, you just so comfortable talking bad upon the mother of your kid to somebody you barely even know. Like I can't, <laughs> I can't. Mika's raising her ahead, hand again. Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> no, 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 no. I don't want to cut you off. So you can definitely finish your thought. No, 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 I have these my, in so that it, it over, it over shines. So my thoughts be like this small sometimes. Okay, go <laughs> so no, but I'm a piggyback on what y'all say. And um, also I question why, why are you in such a rush to, uh, a rush to paint yourself as the protagonist? 
Mm-hmm. Like as as like the positive aspect within this relationship. At the end of the day, it takes two. At the mm-hmm. end of the day, and, and and I'm not trying to say, oh, you're automatically a bad dude. Like, no, I'm not going to say that. But like, it like if there is miscommunication between two people, it's between two people. It's not just one person, right. you know, miscommunicating. So like the fact that when when men have this like rush or like from from jump, I mean, you meet me Thursday and by Saturday I can I can you told me everything about your fucking baby <laughs> mama. Like, bro, I'm questioning you. Like, I'm not questioning, right. questioning you. Because at the end of the day, there has to like at the end of the day, there's a, a innocent child that's in between the two of you. And there is a someone has to be about solution. So if that means exactly like, backing down and not always pushing your point to make a point, you get what I'm saying? Like, someone has to be about solutions. Like, yeah, I don't respect no man that comes with any type of foul, ill tongue about anything about their baby mama mm-hmm. at all. Right. Like, and then and then their girlfriends backing them up on doubling mm-hmm. down on the bullshit. And, and, cool. I, and cool FYI, that. dudes, FYI dudes, I don't know if y'all fucking know this, but any bitch that's, that's, that's quick to hop on the whole my baby mama crazy bandwagon, like, you need to be questioning her. Like, if she's mm-hmm. not encouraging you, like, hey, yo, talk to her. You know what? Fix that. You know what? Just hear what she got to say. Like, you know, okay, maybe you can't, maybe you can't see her face to face, but, like, take it a time at, you know, step, encouraging you. Because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, the thing that, that some men don't understand is that, is that there's no excuse as to why you're not in your child's life. None. Like, right. there's none. There's, there's none. There's nothing you can tell me as to why you're not in your child's life, unless, unless the court deems you unfit. <laughs> not, unless, that's the only way. But other than that, and, and what I'm trying to say is if it takes time, maybe you can't do it the way you want to, but if it takes time, if that, if that means by text message, if that means slowly but surely, like, that's what it means. But, but if that, you're... Go ahead. You just have to make effort. You got to make effort. effort. I don't want to hear like, oh well, I try, but like she won't let me see little man. But guess what? If, if she <laughs> won't, man, I mean, you gotta you gotta correct what's right with her before you see little man. And yeah, okay, some some women be like, oh well, we could have been like we not together. So if you're not out here trying to do like counseling, you know, ther- any type of therapy, if you're not fighting in the courts look i i had to go and find a there's programs out here that will support you in filing papers where it doesn't cost a thing so yeah there's no excuse and i understand that a lot of states agree with the mom off top but like Mm. i said there's no excuse unless you just out here batshit crazy there's no fucking excuse as to why you're not in your child's life. There's no excuse as to why your child has not seen you, heard from you, read something from you, saw a pigeon in the sky from you. <laughs> and I don't know how many pigeon in the sky. I mean, right. I, like real talk. So yeah. Yeah, like for those women that support that type of behavior, shame on you. Shame on you because you need to take a, a, a step and think if, if you was, a, and, and you know what? I'm not going to say that because I feel like being a mother is something that you do not understand until you're in it. It's real easy for you, for people to say like, Oh, put yourself in my shoes. You, 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 you don't even know what my shoes look like. That you, 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 you and pay less. I'm in Louboutin. Like it's two different motherfucking types of shoes. You don't even know what the fuck my shoes look like. You well, feel wait, what about, what about the moms that wear pay less? I mean, no, 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 but that's the thing, though. That's the thing, though. The moms that wear payless, we wear them shits like they fucking Louboutins, and it's a fucking mentality. Okay. So it's like, you you think you think it's one shoe, it's a whole nother motherfucking shoe. So, like, you, it's just something that you don't understand, but, like, I just, I just all about, as a community, us encouraging men to be in their child's life. Absolutely. Of it's okay. Oh, she tripping fifty two thousand. What the fuck? Like, why? Do, why are you in her pockets? Mm-hmm. Like, Hello. <laughs> why are you in her pockets. Mm-hmm. Oh, 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 
could it be a projection of your irritation with what your man is going through? Because you know that Mr. London is going to have to give up Paris to to his. Uh, is 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 that what it is? Like is projection? Projection. Yeah. I mean, it, it it doesn't take much to have some sort of compassion to try to see things from another person's perspective, whether you have kids or not. Like I've dated men with children before I had my son, and. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, Me too. I I absolutely get it. Like yeah, not that I I 100 understood, but I I understand there's two sides to the story. Like this person is probably crazy, like you're explaining her to be, because of something that you put her through, yeah. or people are going through something and it, and it changes them. It turns them to a different person. Like so, are you exposing to me like you know that you might have some toxic ways that might drive me crazy? I might need to separate myself from this whole situation. Yeah. And her actions, her, her reaction is off of his actions. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and that part, to think that, a, to think that a woman is just batshit crazy because she just woke up on a Wednesday morning and said, you know what? I just had my coffee. It's time to go batshit crazy. Like, that's just crazy. <laughs> that's just fucking crazy. So, so like, that- but the thing is, what if she really was like that, but you decided to continue to fuck with her and have a child with this person? So okay. what does that say about you? You know exactly. what I mean? Exactly. What does that do? You to be, like you, if, so, if someone's a sociopath or have any type of mental disorder, by the time y'all was fucking, you, you, <laughs> you've got clear example of what that order is. So <laughs> it still doesn't. It doesn't fucking excuse you. It just does not it at doesn't. all. And it's so crazy because. Men don't think about all that shit until after the child is born. It's like, oh, well, she had a rough childhood. Or she didn't have a relationship with her father, and yeah. she like, my well, like, you, you didn't, you didn't put that into consideration <laughs> until you started spreading your motherfucking seeds between her fucking her fruit. Like you, <laughs> you, you didn't think about that. Yeah, yeah, that that reminds me of just like another situation of dumb shit niggas say. Oh. <laughs> Go ahead. There we go. Look. <laughs> go ahead. So, it's, my, oh, it's my turn. Yeah, it's it's you, Meek. Take it away. This is your favorite segment, honey. This is my That's segment. Da-da-da. Dumb shit niggas say. So on an app, so on an episode of uh, Love and Marriage Huntsville, <laughs> a man goes on to. Hold on, I have to go ahead and find it. So. A, a man goes on and basically expresses his um, his opinion that he doesn't have to do anything as a father than other than provide. And for okay, I don't know if you guys are familiar with this show. I, I don't know the dude's name, and honestly, he doesn't even deserve that type of notoriety. <laughs> but but on this show, it's all black. It's, I, I can't even say predominantly. It's all black. Yeah. And for a black man to get on here and state that his only duty is to provide, is to provide. And in, in 20, well, I don't know when this show was aired. It had to be between 2018 and 2020 because it it's, it's like fairly new. Yeah. Like to think that that's all that, that that's all of what your duties as a father yeah right so he's it's a it's a group of men they're talking about you know you know how his wife one guy's wife feels you know what i'm gonna play the clip guys go ahead roll roll that clip i would would agree martell you would agree that she's a single parent She's not looking at the financial aspect of it. That's you got to look at that. Hold on, no, no, no. A lot of people can provide financially, but a lot of people can't be a dad. Growing up, my mom, she had a boyfriend for 17 years. 17 years. He worked, but guess what? He never came to a game. He didn't support me. He didn't take me places and things of that nature. You know what I'm talking about? So I look, I, I look back on that. And I mean, that might be how she feels. Well, imagine this. Imagine to a degree. This. Imagine this. You had to choose between somebody coming to your games and someone feeding you. The thing is, I can provide for the family, and I can also pick my kids up from school, take them to different um, games and things of that nature, and support them, and help me out clean up the house. And so, yeah, it can be done. But let me ask a question. What, what do you gain from that? I get satisfaction <laughs> that I take care of my family. 
That's so he asked, he asked, what do you gain from that? Go ahead, Meek. Um, I just want to provide a little bit of background. So the, so the gentleman poses that his only obligation was to provide. And then his friends went on to explain, you know, no, it's not just providing. There's other ways, you know, where you can like, you know, you know, um, take on your position as being the father. Um, now that guy who was his friend, the reason why I think he has a clear understanding of that perspective is because for those who are not familiar with the show, his wife is the money is she wears the pants. So she's the, she's the breadwinner in the situation where he was placed in that position where he had to where well, not going to say he had to, but you know, where he felt that position of being at home and spending more time with the kids and so on and so on. So that's the reason why his perspective is so clear on that because he, he's seen the other side. Wow. My whole thing is I, his, his boy asking him like, what do you gain? That's the dumb shit that like we're talking about because because it's like so is that just okay for you just to provide for a family that because you're so busy making the money that you don't know who you're really coming home to do you know your children do you know what their favorite sport is do you know how well they're you know doing in soccer or you know in the recital like are you privy to any of this or you just come home you know, make sure the bills are paid and do it again the very next day. Like, ha- Meek, what's good? <laughs> no, I, like, no, no, no. no. It's, so, it's so frustrating for, cause I, I didn't know that people really thought like this because my dad, you know, he worked very hard to bring home the bacon, but that's my best friend. He knows yeah. me. You know what I mean? Like, he knows a whole lot about me. Just And, and we didn't even live in the same house. I didn't grow up living with my dad. He was in another state. And yet, (laughs) and yet he knows these things. He knows my dentist. He knows who my doctor is. He knows if I'm allergic to anything. Like he knows, you know, my first day of school and, you know, he knows these things. And I feel like this guy doesn't see the importance of, of knowing these things at all. Like knowing his own children. What's good, me? Um, so I want to speak on this because I feel like it's something that we don't, that like our community, when I say our community, I mean, I'm preferably talking about the black community, don't really talk about, but as a mother, it's like, it's, it's, um, required that you are interested in everything that your child is interested in. When in fact, there's some things you really just don't give a fuck about. You know what I mean? Now, that does not mean that I do not love my child. I love every single inch of my child. Like, like I look at that little boy and I'm like, oh, my God. Like, and it just melts my heart. Right. But I would be lying to you if I told you that I cared about every single motherfucking Pokemon that ever <laughs> existed. Like, I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> because I well, don't. I should be buying pictures. And I care the- about every fucking Eiffel 86 record, Michael Jackson record, fucking, I don't, I do not. And my son, but you know what? It's enjoyable to my son. And when he brings it to me, he lights up. So guess what? Guess what? I might not want to deal with it, but guess what I do? Because Mm -hmm. at the end of the day, that little moment, that little, I don't don't even call it a sacrifice because it's really not that deep, but that little moment where I'm like, Ugh, I don't care, but I know it means a lot. <laughs> no, that's no, that's real. Because people think like we're supposed to be so like, oh my god, show me again, and like show kids me will come to you and be like, look what I can do, like steward on. <laughs> mom, 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 mommy, me. mama. No. Mom, can I tell you something? Yes, baby. Did you know that the equilax of the fucking lot I'm like no babe I did not know that and I don't care to know that and but you know what the fact that it interests you it it warms my heart so it's right. been so and what I'm trying to say is I do feel but I, I do feel 
Like that part of parenting comes from being the primary parent of being with someone every single day and understanding what they day is and also acknowledging our children as their own individual person. So a lot Absolutely. of these a lot of these dads come in. It's like they pick a boo daddies and come in and, and and that don't mean you're a Debbie. It doesn't mean you're a Debbie. You can be with your wife, with your children and still be a fucking pick a boo daddy. But mm -hmm. you know, picking your head in and picking up, hey what's up champ? How was your day? And then going back out and then the rest of your day is a, is about you. That's not we don't have that privilege as at all. At all. Or as, I'm not going to say as mothers, but like as primary, whoever is the primary parent, we don't have that privilege. And so for you to think that all you can do is provide, let's be hmm. honest, the government can provide, honey. You know what I'm saying? We can go get any Jim, Dick, and Harry to fucking go and provide. But what kind of memory and and chemistry are you building with your child? Like, that's the question. I, I think about that and I'm like, on holidays, like Father's Day or his, you know, the, that guy's birthday, like, what do their kids do for him? Like, does he care? Does he give a fuck? And it, and it also kind of seems, this is kind of generational. Because he probably came from a home where yeah. his dad was like, I'm here, I'm but he's not really there. You know yeah, what I mean? Right. And that's and, okay. And this, his friend is telling him, like, my dad, my mom had a boyfriend who, you know, for 17 years, but he didn't do X, Y, and Z. Like, he wasn't that male figure in my life. Like, do you want to look back and be like, like, when you're on your deathbed and your kids ain't there because they don't know you? Oh, right. Oh, okay. Like, no, no, it don't even got to be deathbed. How about this? How about when anything monumental happens in your child's life after the age of 18? How about... Oh, dang, did you hear that Junior got accepted in such and such? No, I didn't. Did you hear that he's expecting his first? No, I didn't. Guess what? You're not going to be a part of that because you don't have a natural bond with your child. And then all of a right. sudden, those are the parents, those type of parents, like that guy who just thinks that it's just financial obligation. You also start to project this obligation to the child as though they owe you something. Like, yeah, I'm the reason why you did, you did this, I'm the reason why, like, no, nah, but then they start regretting that later as they get older and nah. they realize everybody is just branching off and going, doing different things. They start to feel bad and they start to sit there and it's too late at that point. It's too late. It's like, you want me to start, you know, you want to be a daddy now? Like I, I've been in a situation where I had, you know, like my mom had, you know, got married to a couple of guys and, you know, <laughs> Coming Shout in out and out. Mom. Yeah, I don't know about that. But Liz Taylor. Liz Taylor. <laughs> but yeah, so and and I looked at these men and maybe that's probably why I have men problems now, but I looked at these men and all they wanted to do is provide and they wasn't really there. So I just like, you know, just another one come and go. It's another yeah. one coming and go. That right. part. And it's like there there definitely has to be a connection. And, and it's like it has to be a personal connection. Like your connection with because I'm 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 the same as you, E, where like my mom married a couple of times and it's like your connection with my mother does not automatically like trickle down to me. Me. So right. like if you don't have a, a, a personable interest and I'm not trying to I'm not trying to be, you know, you gotta be careful with words. So I'm not trying to say like personable sexual. No, I'm not saying that. I'm talking about like a personal connection with a child. You can have a connection with the child. Right. If you don't have that like it, it just can't it just cannot work at yeah. all yeah and then growing up and they wondering like why you don't respect them like why should i respect you that's yeah. what I, it, I don't even know you dude i, I just know you around the house exactly at dinner <laughs> breakfast deuces I'm that's out. right and it's like what because your check you know because you bringing in a w2 nigga like i'm supposed to just automatically just deem you with respect like you the, the fact that as adults now i don't I don't believe we practice this, but the adults, the generation before us, they just felt like because they were adults bringing in some type of like, you know, income that I can't see the fuck ups that you're doing. Like children are some of the wisest beings here on earth because yes. they're not influenced by society quite yet. 
So for you to think that children can't see what the fuck you're doing, you are mistaken, completely mistaken. And this dude, this dude has a history of being very misogynistic. And so like he, and that's another thing I want to tie this in, is that men act a certain, well, some men. Act some a men, we're going to do that disclaimer because like, yeah. not all men. Right. Yeah. yeah. Some men, you know, do this, you know, do this, have this like retaliation or this like this behavior towards their significant other, their baby mama or such and such, not thinking of the co- of the connect link to the child. So right. it's like you partaking in your child's life has nothing to do with your motherfucking wife. OK, mm-hmm. like it has nothing to do. And you will you will see that once you get over it. No, so I have a completely separate. I have a friend whose dad was in her life. Like he, they all lived in the same house or whatever, but she didn't really like know him like that. You know what I mean? Like he was one of those dads, like he just worked all the time and just came home, ate, sleep, go right back to work and really didn't care about establishing a relationship with her or her siblings. So the day came when, you know, she's in a relationship, she gets proposed to. On her who wedding day, down the aisle? who was walking her down the aisle? She came down that aisle by herself. And her dad was like, <laughs> you know really? you And she was like, yeah. well, I mean, nigga, like, yeah, we lived in the same home and you were there and you were taking care of things financially, but I don't know you. I don't know you. Like, I don't think about that. You. Think yes. about that. You I didn't have the chance to t- get to know me. So why should you even have the opportunity to walk me down the aisle? Be a part and, of my life. And the, and the dad felt some kind of way, of course. He was just kind of like, well, I did this for you. And when you needed this, you know, I, I made sure you was doing this. And it was just Wait, like, but, but, but why do you want to give me away to my husband? And like, you don't even know him because you never got the opportunity to eat. You didn't care to get to know him and to see like, if this is a man that I should even get to ma- like, should I marry this man? He didn't even right. come to you when he wanted to propose. Mm-hmm. That part. See, mm-hmm. And that right there, cause I got to piggyback on what you just said. Um, this whole thought process that I did this for you. I did that for you. Like first and foremost, this child came from a hot night of passion, as my grandmother would once say. Like, <laughs> like this child, the, the child, or oh, the children did not did not say, "Hey, it's my turn. I'm ready to come down to earth." Like, no, it was through some 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 good feeling, as my grandma would say, <laughs> yeah. some good feeling, some hunching. You know what I'm saying? Okay. You decided to relieve. And now we have a motherfucking baby. So, <laughs> and, and that choice that you're making when you relieve yourself is the obligation of being a guardian. Okay? You are a guardian. Did so you to, hear that, future? Future, did you hear that? Okay. You are <laughs> a guardian. That is the part of being a parent. So, the whole financial, like, your financial choices and your like to choose the experiences of the child whatever you choose that is on you that is not the debt of the child so when to to bring that up to the children and say as if it's a debt that they owe you they don't owe you shit shit they don't owe you not a motherfucking thing so for you to carry yourself on like you doing something for them like no that is your obligation because let's, yeah. be, let's be honest, if it wasn't an obligation, you wouldn't, there's actual criminal charges that go against <laughs> ne- negligent parents, okay? So right. it's definitely spiritually and, you know what I'm saying, figuratively, like, it's your, it's your obligation as a guardian to make sure that you provide the best life period for your child. Yeah. Yo, I feel like this episode has been, like, very fuckboy heavy. So let's let's segue over to Monday nights versus we had Brandy and Monica and I was really looking forward to watching it and I haven't seen it yet. However, I was really happy to see that they were like breaking records. So Brandy and Monica, they combined for over 20 million 
United States song streams after the versus battle. So uh, they got about 21.9 million on demand streams for their song catalogs from August 31st to September 2nd. Just a few days. Wow. That's good. In a few days, not a week. That's good. A few days, they got over 20 yeah. million streams. Shout out to, you know, their record labels and those girls. They about to get about to get that bread. So at one point, um, concurrent views, 1.2 million on versus on Instagram, on Apple Music, 1.8 total. Um, on Instagram, they had 4.2 million views total. Um over 100 million in stream likes. So you know how you press the little heart. They had 100 million of those. Um, they had 35K people click to sign up to vote because they had that link going on. So this is over 5 billion impressions online. Wow. And this is, and, and, and look, we have said this before, like we've, we've been waiting on women to come yeah. on this verse. It's like we had Jill Scott and Erica Badu who set records in their own right with that. Right. And and Brandy and Monica, of course, you know, we know there was a little drama back in the day. So people, I think, were tuned in looking for, like, some drama. But it was actually love from everything that I saw. The comments from the, from the viewers, they wanted to see the drama. They wanted to be lit. They were trying to kind of, you know, speculate on what was going on. However... These two women gave a great show and had this many people tuned in. I thought that was incredible. So amazing. So did you guys watch it? Because we were supposed to get together and watch it, but you know, we we were. We (laughs) We were. So I didn't get a chance to, no. I saw the beginning. I saw the beginning of it. And the one thing about verses is that. Is that like okay? So a lot of the, a lot of the artists that have done verses, they their music reigned during a time where we weren't as they weren't as uh, available to their to their fan base as the artists are now today. You know what I'm saying? Like back then, we weren't able to hit up Nelly. You know what I'm saying? Like on social media and shit. So we get to see them within their own personality like you know what I mean like how they are how they communicate how they interact with like so and so so I, yeah. I'm not gonna lie like a little bit of that can throw you off a little bit or you'd be like I didn't think she was that way or why is she doing that or you and know people I mean? watching your body language on a yeah. live that, broadcast that yeah. part yes that part you know what I mean? So it's like if people read in certain, you know, body language cues, like how you, you know, pointed out, be like where it's like, mm, okay, cool. Um, I saw the first half of it. It was cool. Um, but I can't lie, though. Like when I'm cleaning my house, like I am I put that Brandy and Monica versus on and just let that bitch ride. Like, <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's been on so- repeat. So they broke records with Apple Music and Instagram, but this does not, none of those numbers include the YouTube unofficial streams that's happening where people are tuned in to watch this on YouTube. So this is, I'm going to YouTube to watch like the replay of it. So this is how yeah. I'm going to tune in. But just just the, the impact of R&B music is sick. It's, it's sick. in a whole Nothing. different vibe. Like, rap is different, and, you know, it's, like, regional. You know what I mean? Like, oh, I like this rapper from New York or this person from the South or this person from Cali or whatever. But R&B is just, like, across the board. It doesn't matter where you're from. And I think yeah. I think because these two women were just so young when they started and they were a part of everyone's kind of, you know, their lives growing up, whether... I don't care what at what point that you discovered Brandy or Monica. You could be 10 years old or you could have been born the year Moesha premiered on. Right. You know what right. I mean? Mo- there are, okay. It's me. I've been watching on Netflix. I ain't gonna lie. Yo, I haven't, I haven't started Moesha yet. But from my recollection, Frank Moesha's dad is trash, bruh. 
I remember one episode <laughs> that he called Moesha trashy or tra- or a tramp or something. Like he called her something because she was dressed and she was like yeah. showing her midriff or something like that. And right. I, I can't wait to like go back and revisit these episodes so I can They're see good. like leave it to be to remember the one motherfucking episode. <laughs> no, because no, because no, because as the, because as the season went on, as like Moesha progressed, Rup. get we get Ray J on there and come to find out this is Frank's son when yeah. his character thinks that this is He's his like uncle or some dad. shit. Yo, yeah, that's trash. Complete trash. trash. Like the but my dad and everything. is with her and Hakeem. I'm still looking for those episodes. Like her and Hakeem, like, I'm like, oh, the whole best. Thing. Some little energy going on <laughs> there, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna have to definitely revisit. Uh, Yo, you no remember shit. that shit though? Leave it to me to be like, no, that one time. <laughs> like, I'm like, I don't even remember that episode. Like, I do. Fuck. It's when her dad called her trashy. She had that little tank top on. She had got a tattoo. He was like, that's exactly it. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, oh y'all. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I, I'm definitely gonna revisit this versus because you know Monica and Brandy had them hits, you know. Yeah, look at hits. And we have to get like New I think Monica. what I learned. <laughs> New Monica. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, the thing I have to give to them is their how can I say this? Their um, musicianship. Yeah. So like. You know, like I like I like I'm a big Tony fan, so I know that like her, like Brandy and Dark Child did a lot of like collaboration together. But yeah. when you go down her catalog and you hear the songs and how they're put together and how they're orchestrated, like yo, you gotta give this woman her credit. And it's the same thing for Monica, where it's like that voice, like it's just. It's unique, and it's, it reminds me, like, of a Mary J. Blige, where no one can sound like her. Mm-hmm. No Nobody. one. Nobody no one. can sound like they're her. Both, they're <laughs> both so unique in a way that, like, we're never going to get anyone like them again. This is a once-in-a-lifetime type of voices that we have, which is why this was such an iconic moment for people to, like, kind of go back in the 90s and the 2000s just revisit these catalogs like it really meant a lot which also sparked like a uh, debate on um soundtracks because we had brandy on the waiting to excel soundtrack we had monica on space jam soundtrack so i want to ask y'all what is your favorite soundtrack cinderella cinderella yeah. You know what? I never, I never thought. <laughs> Impossible. <laughs> Wait for me, <laughs> Impossible. <laughs> so Cinderella is your favorite list? Yeah. You know what? I'm, a, I'm gonna be honest. I haven't seen it. Um, but look to everyone. <laughs> there are so many classics that I have not seen. So whatever. <laughs> Send me no, all the me hate too. mail. Me too. Uh, let me not stall you out. Ex- wait and exhale, Bethany. Go ahead and say it. Wait until exhale is my favorite soundtrack. Yes. Wait and in a, in a close second is Dream Girls. <laughs> <laughs> what? what? <laughs> Come on. Oh. Oh. Oh, she's so old with the theatrics. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, bro. Yeah. So what's, what's the issue with Dream Girls? What's the issue? With Dream Girls? It, it's just it's just Dream Girls. We are Dream Girls. I know, no. And FYI, FYI, um, the original, the original, uh, with the um, what's the I can't. It's the, the original. I, no, it's another one. It's another one, a sister, her, her name was Sister, and, like, she was, what's the name of that? I don't know. Sparkle. That's what I'm thinking now. Sparkle. Okay. Sparkle is bomb. The original Sparkle, bomb. 
Dream Girls. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I love B. Beehive, don't kill me. I love B. But yes. Bro, come on. Like, <laughs> no, no, Beyonce, no, 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 no. Beyonce killed. No, no, Jennifer no, Hudson no, no. killed. Jamie Foxx killed. Jay like, Hood. Jay Hood definitely killed. Low key, I hated Jamie Foxx wig in this whole fucking production. <laughs> <laughs> like, I did too. I ain't gonna lie. I was like, why are you? I fucking hated his wig. Like, I'm not gonna say. I'm like, yeah, yeah I'm like, like the fuck? What the hell is you yeah. this shit? The <laughs> hell? Yeah, I hated his whole thing from the whole production. I do think that Dream Girls is something that will be way more endurable live Broadway like on the stage like not the not the whole Yo, star speaking of, can I tell y'all how <laughs> so a couple nights ago I couldn't sleep so I'm gonna be honest like this whole like Chadwick Boseman dying thing has just really fucked me up so I was like you know what what helps me sleep is a smoke weed however I was like you know what I'm a smoke but I'm going to watch Hamilton. Because, How did that go? So, girl, I <laughs> I didn't know so what I was getting myself into. <laughs> so, oh, here she is. Because I heard, paranoid. like, how Hamilton was, like, sold out. Like, it was so mm-hmm. tough to get one ticket to go see yeah. Hamilton. So, I'm like, I always knew, like, it was a big deal. But I didn't know what it was and what it was really about. I knew it was about Alexander Hamilton. So, I'm like... Okay. Like, what's the big... <laughs> so my high ass, I'm sitting there, I got all my snacks and shit. Like I got my, you know, I'm I'm literally like in bed with my ashtray sitting on the bed with me. I'm just like fuck it. Like, yes, fuck Bethany. It yes. So I didn't know it was like a hip hop yeah. adaptation of this Alexander a- Alexander Hamilton story. And then, like, there's so many black people talking about, like, history, yeah. like, a black man playing George Washington. I was just like, yo, yeah. what is going no. on? And you know, you know, and, uh, so, so, like, allegedly, well, I'm not going to say allegedly, but Alexander Hamilton was biracial. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, I learned a lot watching it, but when I tell you my mind was blown 98% of the time I'm like I still don't understand what I'm watching because that's the it was, weed I mean like it, it was the weed it was absolutely it was the weed. weed like it was absolutely the weed like it, I I love Alexander Hamilton the Broadway show but it ain't that deep like that was the weed <laughs> it was definitely <laughs> the weed yo it really had me done so I I was like you know what I watched the first act and then the next day I smoked again and finished it and I was like you know what I, I'm gonna watch this again but I really liked the experience of watching it high so I think that's yeah. gonna be my new thing I'm just like you know when outside open back up I'm gonna start going to Broadway shows and just be, be high, high before so. I go in <laughs> yeah, yeah. Back and yeah, watch why, not, why not why not just take some fire take some shrooms go see a Broadway well, cut play I've never done shrooms. Has anyone on this panel done shrooms before? No, I have. No, ma'am. Me? You know what? We're gonna we're gonna save this story for another day because I really want to know about your experience. Like, I I'm so curious because everyone who says that they've tried shrooms are just like, yo, like your mind, and it's just so this, this, and that. So we're gonna save it. I I'm looking. I'm not gonna say nothing right now. I know we, we, go, we gonna save that. Okay. Yeah, I know so, it. but but to get back on topic, when you said what's my what's our favorite soundtrack? To believe believe it or not, my favorite soundtrack is Black Panther. Oh. I feel like it was so well done, and also like I'm a dancer, so like like the beat, and then also I think like it was a good mix of like Western you know cali california vibe with african tribal so you yeah. hear that all throughout the soundtrack yeah like even when i hear those songs come on again i'm like oh shit okay that's what yeah. we're doing yeah. yeah yeah black panther is the definitely vibe. one of my favorites like for sure yeah Ludwig did his thing he did the score and he you know produced a lot of those songs so and he won that oscar 
he got that Oscar. Okay. So Ludwig and Ryan Coogler, the director Ludwig, of Black Panther, Ludwig, were roommates like, like, like in college. Ludwig, Ludwig like yes. Ludwig, Beethoven, Ludwig. That's his name. Yes. So him and Ryan Coogler. You know, supposedly Beethoven was black. Yes. So is he related to, <laughs> to Beethoven? <laughs> <laughs> so Ludwig is white. He's a white man. I mean, he could still be related to fucking Beethoven. Did you see could. the pictures of Beethoven? He could, yeah. He definitely had that, you know. He had that that thick hair, you know what I'm saying? They tried to <laughs> lighten his skin a little bit. And those Just photos. a little bit, oh. yeah. <laughs> we see it. We see it. So Ryan Coogler and Ludwig were um, roommates in college. So, That's you fire. know, it was destined. And to see them win a project, you know, win an Oscar together for their project is incredible. So, yeah. So he also pro- he also produced This Is America by Childish Gambino. Just another, you know, yeah. reference. Of fire. Fucking yeah. fire. I, and I, yeah. love, I, love, I love the irony that, like, this white man is producing such, like... Monumental, like he has some, yeah, yeah. I love that. I love because yeah. to me, it just shows the progression as to where we're going as like a a a, a, a human species. You feel me? Like, I love that. Yeah. All okay. right, y'all. So we're going to segue into our red light special. If you guys have a question for the ladies of the Crazy Sexy Cool Podcast, shoot us an email at crazysexycoolpod at gmail dot com or Twitter, Instagram. DM us at Crazy Sexy Cool Pod. So today, today's question is, <laughs> I thought this was really funny because people really don't talk about, when people talk about their parents, it's almost in like this, like our parents are like this mythical figure. Like they're just, they just do no wrong sometimes, you know? But I've never been that way. Like I understand that my parents are human and they fuck up just like anybody else. So this question asks, What's the worst advice your parents ever gave you? <laughs> Everything. <laughs> Everything. <laughs> oh, Don't get me wrong. I love. I, I love my mom because, like, my my dad wasn't there. Um, not by choice, you know, because me and him and my mom didn't get along. Um, because she was stubborn and she was one of those moms that you know. You don't want to be with me. You can't see your kids. But, oh. um, yeah, nothing. Like, she didn't teach me. She, she, she didn't teach me shit. And, 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 and I don't fault her for that now. Um, she's trying to be better. But, yeah, she, she, yeah, I have, no, I have nothing to say. Good. So, and was it any, was it anything in particular that she ever said or you just like, what or you were like she she gave you some advice and you took it and was like well that fucking backfired mm, let me see some advice that she i don't know she my mom didn't really talk to me so it's like mm. like the, the I, I think i got good advice from her i never wanted to be a mom i never wanted to be a mom like her so i mean i, I took that from her but her giving me bad advice she never my mom was never that mom that came in like talk and like try to give me try to give me any type of advice um, yeah try to be more of a you know like a friend have, and mom so I yeah. have to say I feel like that's like a common thread with a lot of like children like within our generation and oh yeah it takes a lot of I don't even know what the word is but I commemorate you on that though Liz because like to go against the family cycle and to also exercise understanding to understand Mm -hmm. that your mom did the best that she could but like to know that you want different for for your daughter I think that like takes a lot of like power so Mm -hmm. it really does challenge yeah it's 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 a it's a challenge to go against like how you were raised and to completely go the opposite way the way like you know what I don't agree because we've always been raised to respect your elders and, you yeah, know, part. almost as if they're all knowing and they don't fuck up. Like, no, yeah, I don't have or, to do and, 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 and do everything as you say, just because right. you're older than me. Like, right. what's that? Or the, the whole, because I said so. It, because right. I said so. Oh. <laughs> and you know what? Cause my son, you know, I'm trying to get out of that because my mom, 
I remember being really young. She told me, don't ask me why. When I tell you to do something, I'm just do just it. Do it. The, yeah. the moment you question why is like the biggest, it's just huge disrespect. But with my son, I don't like, if he asks why, I try to explain so he explain. understands why. Yeah. Like, and if I how, don't know right. why, and if I don't know why, I'm not ashamed to for my son to see, look, mommy, mommy doesn't always know why. But guess what? We can get the answers together. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. to like be able to step down from that pedestal that parents are placed upon. Yeah. yeah. What about for you, ladies? What's the worst yeah. thing your mom ever? What about you, like, Meek? Advice from a parent ever. My day. mom. I love my mama to death because low key. <laughs> My mama and Oprah was cut from the same fucking thread. <laughs> like, I swear. But the worst advice ever was get a real job. Ooh. That was the cut. worst advice ever. And ooh, ooh. me being me, I look at it and, I, and I, I definitely don't shame her for it or charge her for it because it comes from, you know, one stability, like that fear of being stable and wanting, you know, stability. But I also see the effects of not pursuing your life purpose and what that does for a person. And I can't be that person. So with that, like I've made the decision, like, no, that's not for me. But through my journey, she's come to understand it. But like in her mind, she's like, you have a son now. You need to get a real job. Like, what the fuck is a real job going to do? There, just just last week, MGM fucking laid off eighteen thousand people. So what All I'm right. not going to do is I'm not mm. going to put my livelihood nor my son's livelihood in a in the hands of some corporation that don't give two fucks about me. That's what I'm not going to fucking do. So True. I would say that. Of course, there's way more thought into that, but I don't want to like take you all the time. But yes, like that was. I would say would be the worst advice. So the worst piece of advice that my parents gave me is to wait until marriage to have sex. Man, <laughs> get the fuck out of here. You know what? <laughs> I'm sorry. The what the here. fuck? Why <laughs> should I wait? Why I can't test drive that thing? Why I do I need to shut it. myself up? And be in a relationship or a marriage with some man, and I find out he can't please me sexually after I'm married to this person. Like, what? I just feel like a lot of people have been taught to teach women to like suppress their yeah. natural, you know, like everyone wants to have sex. It's a natural thing. At it's some point, thing. you're gonna want to do that. So what's wrong yeah, the time with for me? <laughs> what's no, wrong no, for one to test like, that thing out? Being in our thirties, yo, my sex, my sex drive is like on an all time motherfucking a thousand. Like, like I got off work, like I wake up hey, in the morning. I'm not gonna even hold you, okay? Like to the point where I did, like to the point I nutted so many times. I looked at myself like, bitch, ain't you? Are dumb? you? Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, like back, to back to back, though. Back to back, back to back. Dick, toy, dick, toy, toy, dick. Like, what the fuck? Like, is that, that just normal? But also, off the joke, though. Like, that's real shit, but off the joke. But going back to what you were saying, though, B, um, you, you being a parent, do you... I don't know how to phrase this question, so I'm going to just fucking say it. Do you realize how misguiding that is? Because, like, beyond not being sexually pleased, but there's emotional ties, especially when you're not as well-rounded within the sex realm. So it's yeah. like, you wait till you're married, and then, like, there's all this, like, emotional transfer that happens through sexual, you know, interaction. And, like, What? That, that shit yeah, doesn't so fucking make when, sense to me. So, like, you know, I'm going to raise my son to for him to understand what sex is really about. It's, it's multifaceted. It's not just one thing. It's not just right. you, a physical contact you have. Exactly. exactly. There's emotions on both sides that will happen. There's a chance of pregnancy. There's 
there's so much. You just right. don't tell. You just don't tell a young girl or a young boy, don't have mm-hmm. sex. That is not sex education. You need to prepare your child for when they have sex because right. they are going to have sex, mm-hmm. bro. <laughs> and we have we have boys. So once those balls drop, girl, okay. it's, 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 it's on. It's and go so time. My thing is, my dad, he prepared. I would say that he tried to prepare me. So I think, so my dad, he told me, um, because we had this conversation, me and my mom, to this day, we can't talk about sex because she gets so, she just clams up. Like, (laughs) this is not her shit. So I guess when I was like six or seven, I asked her about like where babies come from or whatever. And she just got so uncomfortable to the point where she called my dad and was like, hey, She's asking about this. I need you to talk to her because I can't. So my dad comes into town. He pulls up. He has a banana and a condom. And he shows me. He basically is like, you know, when two people are in love, you know, they may want to, you know, express it physically. So if you're going to do that, make sure that you wear a condom and blah, blah, blah. And so he puts the condom on a banana (laughs) and... And my mom is basically like, she's mortified. Mind you, I am seven years old and my dad is doing this. My dad is showing me how to put on a condom on a banana and I'm seven. So she's like cringing. But I really appreciate my dad for even doing that because how many, look, how many dads do you know, especially with a daughter, that will go that deep into detail about protecting yourself. Cause my dad understood, he understood she's going to have sex one day while my mom is like, don't have sex until you're married. So it was like two different levels of it. Cause most guys that I know from the moment they have a gender reveal party and they find out they're having a daughter, I'm buying a shotgun. Like, No, my dad was the one to come through and be like, okay, she's going to have sex one day. So let me try to prepare her to at least be protected and to do it safely. While my mom was like, don't have sex. So that's why (laughs) that is the worst advice. No, prepare your child for when they have sex. Please. Who's to say, mom, I'm getting married anyways? (laughs) Right. Right. (laughs) Right. Hello. Hey, mom, what if I don't want to get married? Married, right. I just, not, I just stay abstinent for the rest of my life and deny my natural Experience inclination to want yeah. to have sex? Like, Ooh. do I do I torture myself like this? No. And, and then you know what? It like you battle. The thing that they don't they don't realize is that the ongoing mental turmoil that they have, you know, placed upon their child, like. As a girl, as a as a girl with that, like you grow up with such like shame and such shame. You know what I mean? Like in in true sexual education, you have to discover and and you know explore yourself. So like to even feel shame for even like touching my titty, yeah. you know, like oh I shouldn't do that. Like it's my motherfucking yeah. body. What the fuck you mean I can't fucking touch my titties? You feel me? Like like that whole shame about it, but also like. But also, like, um, like how you said, like, prepping your children for when they have sex. First off, as parents, I know we're not giving the manual when it pertains to parenting, but you have to trust in what you have installed in your children. So if you yeah. are so, so scared and, oh, my God, this can't, like, that means you don't even trust your teachings. Mm-hmm. Wow. So yeah. Why should I, as a, like, you don't even trust you what you're teaching. So, like, you, it's a point in time where, like, that's, and that's why I always say as parents, it's not my duty to mold my child into this perfect being that I see fit. No, it is my obligation and my duty to guide my child and, and yeah. give my child the proper resources to, to maneuver through his journey in life. In life, like, period. Yeah. In life, like, I, period. I even asked my mom, I'm like, well, why did you never like talk to me about sex? And she was just like, <laughs> she couldn't come up with an answer. She was like, well, I had your brother when I was 15. I just thought, like, and I was just like, no, 
you have I, I can't read your mind. You need to there needs to be some sort of communication going on here. So which but is did why she did she talk to you on. about um like your, your cycle, but she didn't talk to you about sex, or did she not talk to you about that either? No. So the whole conversation came about when I was talking about sexual education in schools. Mm. And she she thought that it should be up to the parents to talk to they their child. About sex. But I'm like, but you didn't talk to me about sex. So, right. I mean, Either way. Like, it's it's a for way. sex education in school. But in Either a way, way. I agree with your mom because the way I'm raising Elijah is I'm allowing Elijah to be his age. So I'm not pushing him to like be, you know, like you need to fend for yourself. I'm not, I'm not pushing him like for that. Like my child is very independent, but I, he's six. I want you to be six. So I don't feel like it's up to the school to determine when my child is ready for sex or not. Like me being the parent that I am, I think that I will be able to know if my child is ready to, you know what I mean? Like if, if it's time for that talk or not, like, but I because, do understand. because my mom didn't talk to me about it, once I discovered certain things, she was the last person I was going to go to to talk about anything regarding my body and my sexual health or anything. Like, I remember when I wanted to, like, start going to see a gynecologist and, you know, I was sexually active, but she didn't know that. So how do I go and be like, hey, mom, can I go to a different doctor instead of my, like, primary physician you know what I mean my right. child doctor whatever like I wanted to go to a different doctor and you know I wanted to have a different conversation but I just wasn't comfortable having that conversation with my mother so when I think about like the whole question like advice that your parents gave you you also have to take into consideration of like their upbringing and what was you know presented to them as they were growing up yeah. and my mom, like I said, she had my my older brother when she was 15 years old. So she she got pregnant at 14 and had him at 15. Like, at what point does she get to have a conversation? It was more so, don't have sex. And it's just, like, passed down from passed generation down. to generation. Right. But they're not having this conversation with the boys. No, they know? definitely not. Yeah, I, know. Like, I didn't. I didn't take a trip to the gynecologist until I was 19. Nice. And Ooh, 19. Girl. I didn't lose my virginity until I was sip, until I was 20. And so my mom just like was like put her on birth control. Like like she like she didn't I didn't I, I didn't have the type of behavior to think I was sexually active, but it was just one of those like precautions. And the side the downside of that is once again like parents not asking the questions I says like what's in this medicine what's going you know what I mean like all that type of stuff so my mom put me on the patch at 19 I end up having a like a side effect reaction where like I damn near went blind and had a fucking migraine like it was bad yeah and it was a fucking patch so yeah so I do think it's a ge generational thing of like not asking questions and like you know Here, how just do this and like put a band-aid on it yeah. But but I also before I forget, I wanted to say like I think that that you you're on to something B when you say with with P you want to explain to him that there's different levels of sex. Like sex is not only penetration. And like when you when you describe it as such, it 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 goes into the whole field of intimacy and what that actually is. And that way we don't have motherfuckers that's out here just trying to fucking jack rabbit fuck you you know what i mean and not yeah, just their own personal pleasure yeah and not, right and not just thinking about self-gain it's like no you you can see the act as what it is and what it's meant to be like it's an intimate connection with someone else like i said before you can have intimate connections with relatives with friends and with lovers so if someone is able to like understand that and understand the fr fr fragility what's the word it's Mas yes, masculine fragil <laughs> fragility. Fragility. There you go. <laughs> of intimacy, of intimacy. No matter who may come within it, I think it takes it to a whole nother level. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I think, it, and I think that's amazing that you guys, you guys are like, you know, how you guys want to teach your sons because you guys have boys, both have boys, so it's like it, it's it's the same but different for me. 
that me having to do it for my little girl because then it's like I was that little girl and you know and my mom didn't teach me anything so it's like for for boys it's like it's amazing that you guys want to teach them like there's different levels of sex because like they're they're gonna be well equipped yeah. as they get older and actually you know understand what that means you know yeah. so I, that's, I think that's really amazing because I understand like hormones may absolutely everything that I instilled in Prince may go out the fucking out window. The window. Because mm-hmm. hormones is really it's like really, you can't do shit about it. There's nothing you you can't pray to Allah, Jesus, <laughs> Mary, you nothing. <laughs> like it's nothing you can do about that. It's inevitable. So like why not just prep? Why not prep on that? Mm-hmm. All right, y'all. So we're gonna wrap up today's show. But usually Meek or Elizabeth would do a quote of the day. Do you guys have anything today? Nah, dog. No, Bethany, do you have a quote of the day today? I do. And I thought it was really funny. And uh, so this girl, I don't know her name, so I can't really like cite my work, my quote, you know what I mean? But she said, no one loves single women more than married men, end quote. <laughs> Um, is killing me. <laughs> this is this is true. <gasps> oh, <laughs> this and is I'm gonna leave it there. We're gonna wrap up today's show. Thank you, everyone who's tuned in. Make sure you subscribe. Look, follow us on Instagram, Twitter. We talk back. You know what I'm saying? Crazy sexy cool pod on Instagram. Crazy sexy cool pod on Twitter. Crazy sexy coolpod.com okay you can crazy sexy cool pod at your daddy bitch at your daddy house <laughs>